Everybody's anxious to find you. Oh, there you are. Well, this is Senorita Juanita, a gift that came maybe from Mexico, but came to us from Missouri, from the grandchildren, from Lily and Melody and Matthew. It was like a, I guess you'd say a birthday present. Some of you remember how we almost burned down the house last week. Anyway, lots of things that we would like to share with you today. And the first thing, what do you think, Juanita? Yeah, here we go. The first thing is a reading of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 through 6. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all, and you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our competence is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. We have heard and we will tell the story. Now put that iguana back there, our scripture iguana. As you can imagine, Coco has written a poem just for you. Maybe it's written on this iguana. What do you think? Okay. The title of Coco's poem is Ioana Goana. Now called an iguana, I've been around for over four million years with a spiny spine and saggy skin. Yes, you won't see any visible ears. To breathe, my lungs use a one-directional loop instead of in and out, and I can hold my breath underwater for 30 minutes or thereabout. This and much more leads me to ask you this, and I don't mind. You want to go on a date with an iguana, or do you want to go with your own kind? I admit that I'm a little jumpy when it comes to falling out of a tree yet I can actually fall up to 40 or 50 feet without an injury. Like a human, diurnal, you know, awake in day and asleep at night. Humans, ha, they call my eggs chicken of the tree, a rare delight. This and much more leads me to ask you this and I don't mind. You wanna go on a date with an iguana or do you wanna go with your own kind? I can store large amounts of fat in my triple chin for times of famine. My tail will regrow if cut off with no line to show. Go ahead, examine. If it's hot, then suddenly cold, I can darken my color like a whiz. Physiological thermoregulation is what the humans have decided it is. This and much more leads me to ask you this, and I don't mind. You want to go on a date with an iguana, or do you want to go with your own kind? It seems in nature that there's always a surprise, and mine is that I don't have just two eyes. Upon my forehead, show me forehead, is a retina-like structure that's a good warner for it can detect a predator or danger that lies just around the corner. This and much more leads me to ask you this, and I don't mind. You want to go on a date with an iguana, or do you want to go with your own kind? Thank you, Coco. Oh, look, 
some gentleness on the cocoa. A little bit of sarcasm in Coco's poem. I wouldn't mind going on a date with an iguana if sushi and maybe watermelon would be served for dessert. Paul, in writing to the Corinthians on behalf of himself and Timothy, was using a little sarcasm by saying that surely they did not need any letters of recommendation the way unknown missionaries might. The Corinthians, like us today, lived in a time when people needed to carry letters of authenticity in order to be accepted, kind of like carrying forms of ID. Sarcasm or not, Paul was always pleased when he heard that any efforts he had made to help people become Christ believers had paid off. Paul also understood clearly that it was God who made him adequate for that task of ministry. An important thing for all of us to remember. Much like the way Jesus, through his ministry, empowered us to be faithful and true ministers. One of Paul's messages for us is that as Christ believers, we become living letters because everything is written on our hearts. Paul is telling us we don't even need a t-shirt or an iguana with scripture written on it for people to recognize that Christ is in our hearts. Even the prophet Jeremiah, way back in the Old Testament, spoke of there being a time when God would write a new covenant on the hearts of people. Paul helps us understand our role as ministers is to help bring people to a place where they will allow and accept God to do work in them. So, Lauderdalians, Boyntonians, Schenectadians, or Ohioans, or wherever you are, let's be instruments of God's love, telling the story and showing what is written on our hearts. Charles Wesley, some 200 plus years ago, wrote a song text about God writing the new best name on our hearts, the new best name of love. I believe that this name of love is actually our own name, somehow seen by others with some kind of a God filter of love. And this is just one way that God gifts us. I did a little research to find out how many names might mean gift from God. And it turns out that there are hundreds and hundreds in all kinds of different languages. Names like Ananias, Chiquita, Donatello, Dorothy, Gabriel, Gabriella, Godiva, Hannah, Hans, Ivan, Jane, Jesse, Joan, Jonathan, Juanita, Matthew, Nathaniel, Zane. Hundreds, just hundreds and hundreds. There are also words that represent gifts of God, things we call attributes of God, things like love, mercy, compassion, goodness, holiness, grace, justice, omnipresence, omniscience, that means understanding, righteousness, forgiveness, and they're all written on our hearts. Many more 
gifts of God come to us through the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Things like wisdom, hope, peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Jesus taught us how to show and live these attributes that we might be seen as people who are these things. By the way, number one, hold up a finger. Jesus taught us that God calls each of us to be and do according to who we have been created to be and do. Our already God fills us with hope by making a promise. A promise to be there for us. A promise that we may get tired, but we won't burn out. A promise that the Holy Spirit inside of us will lift us up just when we think we might not be able to stand on our own. A promise that distress won't lead to desperation. A promise to equip each of us with just the right things we need, though different for each of us. May we not get in God's way, and may we not get in our own way. By the way, number two. Hold two fingers. Paul spoke, although somewhat sarcastically, about these letters of recommendation. And we may think that there's a bit of sarcasm in saying that God will write our name on our heart, but that is just part of the mysterious nature of the Holy Spirit, to be able to do these things, and that people really do see them. By the way, number three. Oh, we could have had five. Number three. Aside from all those names I listed earlier, just part of the hundreds and, and hundreds, these names that have some kind of meaning as gift from God, people see us for who they perceive us to be. That is the name they write on our hearts. Our task in life is for people to see the name that God has written on our hearts. We have a very beautiful piece of music that we would like to share with you today. This piece of music is called Slow Dance. It's from a little suite that was written by, yes, I know my voice gets louder when I come closer to this sophisticated equipment here. Uh, it was written by the English composer Rafe von Williams. Oh, look, there's Francis and St. Francis. I guess everybody's sort of here, here today. And it's just a lovely piece of music that we would love to share with you. Let me just try and sit there, help me out.
Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for writing your new best name of love on our hearts. Continue to empower us to find ways to allow others to see that name, that love, and to tell the story. Help us to always have the grateful heart that knows how to say thank you for those things we already see, blessing upon blessing, and to thank you for orchestrating life in ways that we cannot see, always revealing at just the right times. Help us to find ways to reach out to others, to extend concern and care during this time of pandemic by finding ways to be safely present for those facing the challenges of schools reopening, for those with health issues other than COVID-19, yet still in need of the care of professionals and hospitalizations and surgeries, for people who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. We give you thanks for giving us Jesus, by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we too are promised that new life. God, help us to be faith-filled people, that we may live as gifts of your love. We pray in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today.